Live, this is Channel 3 News. A triple two alarm fire is burning at this moment in downtown Cleveland. The fire broke out about 20 minutes ago at East 20th and Hamilton. A one-story industrial building is burning. Firefighters are having trouble with the high winds and bitter cold as well as the flames. Good evening, I'm Jill Beach. And I'm Le Leon Bibb, and we'll bring you more on the fire as details become available. It is a brutal and a bitter night in Northeast Ohio. The winds are howling near whiteout conditions in some areas, and record-setting low temperatures are possible. Driving is hazardous out there. High winds are drifting, and they're causing big problems. The, this truck jackknifed on I-90 westbound near East 185th Street. Both Geauga and Lake County are reporting extremely dangerous driving conditions. Lots of fender benders and snow plows, of course, are out in force. Steve Brown will be along in just a few minutes with a complete weather details for what tomorrow will bring. It is cold out there, and this strange winter of 1989 has picked an unusual target. Usually balmy Southern California got dumped on. Six inches of snow in some Los Angeles suburbs. A helicopter had to rescue a woman who lost control of her car in San Bernardino. Weather may have caused the crash of a U.S. charter jet in the mountains of the Azores off the coast of Portugal. 144 people are dead. The plane was trying to land in a thick fog when it smashed into a mountain and burst into flames. There are no survivors. Most of the passengers were Italian tourists headed for Caribbean vacations. The six crew members were all Americans. Nothing. In Washington, President Bush says he will not back down from John Tower's nomination for defense secretary, despite allegations of alcohol problems, womanizing, and questionable dealings with defense contractors. No vote on the Tower nomination is expected until the end of the month. Another drug bust as Cleveland police continue their Collinwood crackdown. What are these? Give them some vitamins. One vitamin C and the other one's vitamin C. Sure, like that. Sure. No, I can't buy that. That ain't mine, man. Oh, well, we didn't say that. We just said, what is it? Them are drugs, man. In two days, while stopping motorists from taking an illegal shortcut, the strike force found one man wanted for murder, issued 77 citations, and made 10 drug and alcohol-related arrests. Cleveland police have also picked up youngsters cutting school. In the meantime, 22-year-old Michael Kenneth Reese today was indicted by a county grand jury on rape and kidnap charges. It is the second time within two months Reese has been charged with rape while working as a security guard. The last time was in Reno, Nevada. Reese was tried for rape and murder. There, acquitted. Channel 3's John Harrington tonight looks at the question just how well screened are private police. Verdict. We, the jury, in the above entitled matter, find the defendant, Michael Kenneth Reese, not guilty of count one murder. In Reno last December 2nd, Michael Reese walked out of court a free man, found innocent of raping and murdering a woman in an apartment complex where he worked as a security guard. Just two months and one day later, a woman was raped at a North Randall hotel where Reese worked as a security guard, and Reese is charged. Would Michael Reese have been working as a security guard in Greater Cleveland had the company known of that case in Nevada? Perhaps not, but the company says because he was acquitted of those charges in Nevada, it didn't even show up on his background check. Just relax. In Ohio, security guard applicants are photographed and fingerprinted and investigated for any felony conviction.